the cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas for EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. We have two more special guests here, uh, Rosario Marin and uh, Molly Fletcher, uh, former treasury uh, of the United States Treasury, former treasurer of the United States, and Molly, former sports agent and motivational speaker. Uh, you guys are here for the Women of the World panel. Welcome to theCUBE. It's great to be here, thank you. Um, so, what do you guys think of EMC? It's a really kind of geeky culture, but as you guys come here for the panel, what are the things that you guys are going to talk about? Molly, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, you know, I commend EMC for bringing these ladies together and for making the effort to, to create a breakout forum, which is fantastic. What do I think? I mean, this is amazing. The energy, the passion, the innovation. Um, it, it is a paradigm shift for me. Certainly, I'm used to working with, you know, round balls and bats, so this is fun. I love it. It's great. So what's the topic of the panel? What are you guys going to talk about? Well, Stella's awesome, and she's going to lob in some questions for us. Um, you know, I think we'll talk about things like work-life balance, certainly a little bit, but we'll talk a little bit about our world and what we did and how we did it. Um, it's primarily what Rosario, we'll sort of you focus were the, on. In the politics, so obviously, you know, that's that can be almost as brutal as tech, and some people <laughs> will say maybe worse, right? I, I think, mean, it's I think so. It could be. It could be. But I think it, just like everywhere. You know, women are coming to take their positions, they're playing the role, they're prepared, they're not just preparing, but they're actually assuming the role at the table. And you see it here, and you see it with this incredible amount of women. Um, and I think what they wanted us to do is share our experiences, because in many ways we're trailblazers. We, we went to places that had never been there before. And so they want to share. They want us to share our experiences, how we got there, what were the trials and tribulations that we had to overcome, uh, and at the end of the day, for women, because this is mainly for directed to women. At the end of the day, I think that everybody is fulfilling their own mission, their their own mission in life. It, there are some times that are difficult, but guess what? As far as I'm concerned, you're bigger than the challenges before you. You guys have been very successful. One of the things that I'm personally passionate about, we were mentioning earlier with Stella on, is that the computer science business has changed to include a lot more women in tech, and still not enough, but that's always kind of like a, a punchline that the, you, you read in the magazines or in the blogs and whatnot. But now with social media, we're now living in an era where we're all connected, where the communication is frictionless. And so, kind of clicks and networks are being disrupted. Now, I was explaining to my daughter, when I grew up, there was no cell phones. We had to go to a pay phone. Right. So the, there, was a, there was always gatekeepers, which always created the silos. But now, with this disruptive, horizontal, unlimited right. communication, yeah. has that changed a lot? The word gets out faster. Are the norms changing? What can you guys point to that you see or that's exciting to you? I yeah, think, for, go ahead. Uh, for me, I mean, what, what's been incredible is the change in the sports space, right? So. You know, it's like I tell my athletes, I mean, it's pretend like you're at a press conference 24 hours a day because when you look down at your phone and you type something, so, you know, most sports agents will have their guys' Twitter handles and their passwords so they can delete it as fast as they post it, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But it's it's a different, it's you, changed the sports space tell for you, sure. Do you tell you, it was a joke we were just having last week is was an executive who got fired for, was that in, uh, in uh, New Orleans, they should put a breathalyzer on the Twitter handle oh, and don't tweet idea. while right. you've been drinking. But no, but you're talking about instant communication where right. there's a direct business model now. Yep, and the platform for endorsements and appearances and things like that for athletes has significantly increased in the sense that they can use that platform to promote the brand, hopefully in an authentic way, to connect with that brand's consumer. So it's powerful from the off the field perspective and revenue opportunities for them there as well. Do you think that women still have an opportunity with this or is that going to change the norms? Because now you can actually, if there's, if there's injustice or intolerance, which is the big thing that's going on now, is what's tolerable, what's, you know, what's inclusive, all these things are being discussed out in the open now. Yeah. What things are happening from a leadership standpoint that you guys are involved in that, that are helping folks because bullying is going on, you have all these apps out there now that are, that are anonymous, which are only fostering actually really bad behavior. Right. So we're going through a sea change here. 
Well, I think, um, first of all, I think that the one thing constant is change. And technology is the most important thing. It's very dynamic. I believe we ought to embrace it. I don't think we ought to fear it. I think we're, we have to embrace it. And, and yes, things are going to change. Things are, they're not static anymore. They're, they're changing all the time. I think that's a great challenge. I see it as a wonderful opportunity. Well, because there are unknowns, you know, we don't know, this are, these are things that we didn't know before for 20 years or 30 years or, you know, when we were growing up. We didn't have this, but I think it's awesome. You know, so we're gonna learn. There will be times when it will be difficult, but we can grow well, sorry, and you, learn you, and be unafraid. You've, un you've uh, accomplished so much in your career. Congratulations. What, did, what couple of things would you share with folks as advice of, of things that, they, that you've learned that you yeah. could pass on? Uh, just be fearless, you know? I, I always talk about how um, there are opportunities that are coming and you see them and they're right in front of you and then you just let them go. For me, it's like you see an opportunity, grab it, run with it. If you were a football player, you grab that ball and you just go. You know, it's embracing that opportunity. My grandmother used to say, when opportunities leave, they don't ever come back. And you know, that stuck in my brain. I have been given many opportunities, but the most important thing is I have taken them. I have utilized them, I have embraced them, and I have run with them. You'd be fearless. Yes. <laughs> Molly, Molly, add to that, I want to get your perspective, because you, you're a motivational speaker as well. Um, people can get some knocks. I mean, you get instant feedback now with social networks saying, hey, you're ugly, yeah, some bullying behavior is certainly permanent. How do, you, how do, how do the, the young women out there stand up and get beyond that? It's a big part of what's being talked about around the social emotional sure. uh, culture we're living in now, where social emotional skills is one of the most prominent skills right now that we're teaching our young children. Right. You know, I think w what people want is authentic and genuine people. And I think if you can be authentic and genuine as women, you can grow. I think also reframing sometimes something that may feel like a tough situation or a challenging situation, you're the only woman in the room negotiating a contract for a big league guy or whatever it is, reframe that as a positive. Yes. There's so many positives that come as part of being the only woman on the range or being the only woman behind the dugout. There's a lot of positives to that. You got to reframe it and look at it as a positive in an authentic way. So I want to get you guys take on, on a question. I would like you both to answer if you could. Yeah. What is the most exciting thing that you've seen with the Women of the World um, group of the past year that's come out of the, the collaboration? What are some of the most exciting things you've seen? You know, for me, <laughs> the, these women um, have embraced this. They're spearheading this. And then the, when the CEO of the organization and leaders in the organization are doing the same thing, yeah you can shift the organization and put more women in leadership roles and allow these women to grow because they know that the gentlemen inside of the organization are supporting it and, and excited about the opportunity. So the energy around it, the authentic passion that they all have and that the leaders Not just have, the lip service, it's actually- It's not lip service, service, which is really cool because a lot of times it is and yeah. it's not here, which is great. I, I just think the quality of the women is amazing. Yeah. You know, when you, when you think about and you see what they're doing and what they're in charge of, and the people that have brought us yeah, yeah, here sure. is like, wow. You know, way to go, EMC. <laughs> yeah. Way to go. <laughs> okay, so what's your take on all the, um, the technology around anonymous applications? Because there's a lot of debate where I live, and certainly, you know, I'm not, you know, just, I won't, show, maybe I won't share my opinion, but there's all these apps out there where you can be anonymous, and it's causing a lot of, um, kind of, a, kind of a step back socially for folks. Insecurity, there's some bullying behavior. Um, how would you speak to folks out there that are yeah. experiencing this? Let, can, I, can I go first? Let, Please, me, let me just yeah. tell you this. Let me tell you this because, you know, having been in politics where you, if you talk about bullying, I mean, if you're in politics, you've been bullied <laughs> enough, okay? Um, I always talk about the fact that my mother must have bathed me in oil because everything just, just goes through. You know, very little things get to you. You should not let anything like that get to you, especially if they're anonymous. They're anonymous, who cares? Right. Who cares? Right. They don't even have the decency to tell it to your face. Right. So why would that bother you? Mm -hmm. um, forget it. Can you imagine if a politician, you know, if, if it's too hot, yeah. get out of the kitchen, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. And you have to build in your children and your grandchildren that strength of character. You know, you are greater. And if people are saying things, they have yeah. a problem, not you. And don't make it your problem. 
Right, I mean, to that point, we choose to take that in and change the way we feel. Don't choose to take it in. Don't allow it to come in and, you know, let it roll off you. And certainly we deal with, I have three daughters, right, that are 11 and 10, they're right inside of that. But, you know, don't allow yourself to be bullied, in my opinion. But I also think you can't control what these guys are doing. Well, Molly, I got to ask you, obviously, the Sterling thing with the Clippers was obviously very notable how, you know, you have some racism just genetically in his, in his system, but it's exposed over one little incident, but it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Now we're living that era where, you know, out in the open, these conversations are going to happen. How can we as a society have these really constructive, sometimes hard conversations? What do you guys see as the, the preferred future in this uh, transparent culture? Well, I think it's great that the culture is more transparent, and I think authentic good people will rise to the top, so I sort of love it. Um, I think that's a fantastic thing. I think you've got to, you know, one of the guys that I worked with forever is Doc Rivers, right, the head coach of the Clippers, and you couldn't put a better guy in that spot to deal with this situation than Doc. Doc is a fantastic guy. He's a great leader. He's exactly who we all see on TV. Um, I love it being out in the open because I think my thinking is that the authentic people, the honest people, the good people will, will flourish. Yeah, and social media is a new algorithm now where, you know, we're showing some stuff that we're doing is that you had not have the data. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, I think that um, this raises the bar for all of us, for all of us. You know, I think we have a great learning opportunity as a society. And I think it's wonderful also that as a whole, um, if uh, certainly did something that we have to be grateful for is that he brought the entire community, all races, all religions, all colors, all shapes together and say this is unacceptable. And so if nothing else, you know, there's he has a unifying force <laughs> that could not have happened before that. Sure. Well, look, at we're here. I mean, look at what the Cube's doing. We're broadcast with some amazing guests, you guys included. Uh, the Fox News and the CNNs, the main broadcasters, they're losing their muscle. Are they losing their muscle or are they transforming? Or uh, They're not the big gatekeepers anymore, I mean, certainly in the sports world. Oh, it's world. changing. I mean, we see more and more broadcasters coming out of the web space that are having success, and, you know, you're putting them on different platforms. You know, it's going to continue to evolve, and, you know, you look at the way ad sales work during the Super Bowl yeah. or things like that. You know, it's it's a very different situation, and it's and it's changing in light yeah. of wonderful women like this and guys like you. So it's awesome. Yeah, you know, and certainly the democratization of, of media and social media is an opportunity, but also as we pointed out, danger. So um, right. great leadership from you guys, women of the world. I think this is the kind of group that we like to see get out there because there will be new opportunities and new challenges. And you know, we have a digital native culture now. Anyone under the age of 18 <laughs> is pretty much wired from day one with Lego blocks and an iPad. So, right. so you right. know, your leadership sure. is, is uh, uh, awesome. So thanks so much for coming Thank on the Cube. You. This is the Cube. Women of the world here at EMC World. This is the Cube broadcasting that signal to you. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back after this short break.